Doctor Who, The Wheel in Space, Episode 2. Real Operation Room, Caselli. Red Band, Emergency Frequency, come in. Please come in. Please. Station 3 to Silver Carrier. Station 3 to Silver Carrier. On Red Band, Emergency Frequency, please come in, please. Burnett. All ready, Leo? Ryan, yes, sir. It's locked on now. Barnett, that's it. Don't get much fun, do we? Better uh, make the most of it. Ryan, make a change from blasting meteorites, won't it? Cohen, Jarvis? Barnett, hold it. Hold it a minute. Tanya, can we take a visual recording of it? Len- Lenoff, yes, sir. Can do. Ryan, still no movement of radio signal, sir? But it put up the anti-magnetic shield, Leo, when I give the word. Ryan Wright, Caselli, still going to plan, sir? But it, good, I'll do an announcement about reverberations. Reverberations. Cohen, before you do that, Jarvis, can I have a word? It's important. Caselli, more bogeys? Cohen and Burnett move away. Ryan, all systems on green, stand by. All green, stand by. Leonoff, I didn't. I don't know what you're grinning about. Ryan, neither do I. Leonoff, isn't funny, Leo. Controllers like a kid with a new toy. Ryan, oh, don't tell me you're going to do, going to be your old, old sticker mud too. Leonoff, if you're a friend of Doctor Cohen, she is known. She is no stick in the mud. She's perfectly right to be cautious. Ryan, come on, Tanya. It's off course about like eighteen million miles. I mean, there's possibly can't possibly anyone alive on that thing on the silver carrier. Jamie's carrying, trying to find a signal light at the Coburn portal. He pulls the light too far, too far, and the cable comes out, putting the room into darkness. Sees a small globe by the doctor. It is a time vector generator. Jamie holds it up to the porthole. To the porthole. Cohen's office. Cohen. Yes, I know all that, Jarvis, but we can't be absolutely certain. Burnett, Gemma, one thing that I beg of you, don't subject me to psychoanalysis. You think I'm having a well of a time, don't you? All kids again, bang, bang, bow up the balloon. You're wrong, you know. Cohen, am I? Burnett, say what you like. The silver carrier is a menace to the wheel. Now, surely you can see that. Cohen, if you equate menace with an automatic power drive, I don't. But it, what else? Cohen, you want me to believe some emergency happened? A silver carrier, a pilot switched to automatic, and then tragedy. But it, right. Cohen and all the crew died. But it, right again. Cohen, what, where was the silver, where was the carrier bound for, Jarvis? But it, servicing station five, I told you. Cohen, this isn't, then, then it isn't be reasonable to assume the automatic were taken to it to the station five, but yes, that's good reasoning. But you're forgetting the emergency; they could have da- damaged the control sensors. In fact, it must have done, which is why the rocket is is so far off course. Corin, assumption again, guesswork. It would be so easy to check, but it, we can't risk the rocket turning on, on in on us. Do you see a blast a hole right for us? Jimmy takes up the cat. Takes a cap off the TGG. Real operator's room. The radio opera rips his headphones off in pain. Ryan, what's the matter? Red Nick. Noise, fantastic noise coming through my headphones. Enough? Leo, the approach indicators are all red. Ryan, Ryan, what's causing it? Green system's gone crazy. Tanya, get Dr. Colvin. Check the emergency system yellow. Caselli, emergency yellow negative. Woman, transfer internal communications to my cell. Ryan, Bill, Duggan, yo. Ryan, will you lie down, will you lie him down there? Caselli, hey, hey, you don't want to do that again. Ryan, hey, listen, the friends can be heard during, coming through the headsets. Coin's office, Burnett, don't argue with me, Gemma. The decision is mine. The station, the people, are my responsibility. Lilith, Ragnick's hurt. Cohen, what happened? Lenonoff, colossal static pulses, swamping detectors. Leonard, 
Ban it, just evoke it. I knew it was a menace. Jamie uses a capital TGG to create a pulse signal. We all have preparations for him. Ban it. Cohen and Linoff enter. Ban it, all right, Tanya. Get back to the complex. See if you can pin this static down. Ban it, balance. Caselli, here, well. Cohen, it's bad. Ban it, can you remove him? Cohen, yes. Ban it, right, you two. Take him to the medical bay. Cohen, gently with him now. Rednick is carried out. Burnett, your attention. The rocket has given us enough. Uh, your attention. The rocket has given us enough trouble. We will knock it out. Dogging right, sir. Lenoff, controller. Burnett, yes, what is it? Lenoff, the static. There is a signal on it. Burnett, there can't be. Why, Nick, they're right. You're right. Tanya, get it. Me a fix on that. Lenoff, if I can. It's not any code I've ever heard before. But it's definitely a repetitive order to it. Why, it's no good using radio. Radio, oh, that is a good using radio or render, radar. We have to use make a million waves. Bennett, you think it's coming from the rocket? Ryan just wants us to make sure it's not coming from anywhere else. Enough, the rocket, it is. Bennett, you're sure? Well enough, certain. I was fixed on it anyway. There's no doubt. Bennett, then someone's is on board, Phil. Phil, sir? Bennett, I want two men to cross over. Organize it, will you? Feel right, sir. But it, 18 million miles, of course. If you're alive on board that craft, it might be a pretty bad way. Silver carrier. After a little while, Jamie stops signaling and checks on the doctor. Still unconscious, he turns to the porthole. See silver suited figure looking in. Newcomer gestures, gestures towards the front of the rocket. Jamie goes to the control room, but the door is locked. Two men already entered through the airlock. They were pressurized the control room. The door opens. Jamie, quick, I've, I've had somebody injured in it. Well, we're all operations room. Lenaman, American, has taken over as radio operator. Lenaham, Voyager 5, call signed K1210Q. Confirm, please, Station 3. Voice receiving you, Station 3. Hello, hello. Lenaham, light to medium major rate storm across our planned route. Between 1300 and 1400 hours, coordinates Alpha 2710 point four B beta 4 point. Do you see Voyager 5? Where do you think? Yes, thank you for your information, Station 3. Lelham, we have computed an alternative route for you, Voyager 5. Stand by for instructions. Computer, voice, computer standing by. Ryan, how are the guests? Enough. Dr. Cohen's examining the older one now. They're both slightly in shock anyway. Ryan, what's the story? Enough. I don't know. Quite a mystery, isn't it? Ryan, Jovis won't like that. What on the, what on green system free, Chang? Chang Oriental. Very odd, sir. Being getting one of the, one or two funny signal signs here and there all the time. As soon as they check them out, they vanish. Ryan, put them on in the log, okay? Chang, yes, sir. It is a number of magnetics. Magnets of touching the outer skin of the wheel and letting go. For the field effects, that's all. Man, all detective fields are checked out, sir. Can't be anything serious. Ryan, well, keep a look and let me know. Man, right, sir. Ryan, more mysteries. Let off. I know, Ryan. Something else worrying me, Tanya. Enough. What about those sudden drops in the air pressure levels? It was small enough, and soon, just as says, I don't like it. Right, how small? Little enough, only a few millimetres. One degree, sometimes one and a half. Right, hmm, some fault in the air supply unit. A pumps. Little enough, it's there are so many different parts of the wheel. Ryan, did you tell Jarvis? Then enough, of course. You bit my head off. Ryan, and you... You told Jeremy Cohen to yet? Lenoff knows she was busy with the new arrivals. I don't like to disturb her. I will follow you, Tanya. I'll start a check on the whole air supply unit. Lenoff, that's what I thought, Leo. Ryan, hmm. Lenoff, none of these things, your systems showing temporary faults, air pressure levels, all they start, all they started with, with the rocket, didn't they? Ryan, why? Why, what do you think? They are little green men on board, do you? 
Then off, well, the two you brought back aren't exactly normal, are they? Right, well, I'll tell you what, hey, if I got, if they get, you get scared, I'll let you hold my hand, okay? Then off, I am so serious. Right, so am I. More the spears from the rocket are getting through the outer hole with this wheel. Medical restroom. Jamie's bar bearing his chest for a checkup. Cohen, breathing again. Out again, in again. Out. Now, I want you to take a deep breath and sail as slowly as you can. Good. You can dress now. Jamie, how about the doctor? Cohen, the concussion, certainly. I'm waiting for the x-rays to see any fracture. What are you both up to? J- Jimmy, hey. Cohen, fancy dress or something? Your clothes. Jimmy, look. Have you ever thought that what you look like walking down the street and those things? People would think you were a bit strange as well. Crying, I dare say. But I understand the anthology. We're both in space. You and your friend who aren't conforming to the custom. Jamie, how about the medical? Do I pass? Cohen, you do. If any can comfort to you, your fine physical shape. Can you give me your full name, please? Jamie, James, Robert McKimmon. The Jamie, Cohen, thank you. And your friend, Jamie, uh, the doctor. Doctor, Cohen, I can't put that down. Jamie, uh, John Smith. Cohen, really? Jamie, I. Cohen sees the medical equipment as manufactured by John Smith Associates. Cohen, Dr. Jane Smith. Jerry, there must have been a lot of them about. Cohen, I dare say, your passport's aboard a silver carrier, were you? Were your passion is aboard a silver carrier, were you? Jamie, ah, uh, you think I could have a drink of water, please? Cohen, what happened to the crew? Jamie, I don't know. Cohen, can you go any further than that? Could you go further than that? Jamie, well, I was ill in the cabin, you see. Terrible fever, raging for days. And when I came to, the door was closed against us. The doctor was hurt, and your people came. Crying, all the communicating doors were closed against you. Jamie, I... Jamie, come in, your friend didn't let you tell you what happened? Jamie, no. Come in, all right, Jamie. That would do for the present. The controller will want to have a chat with you. Well, I have to get you home somehow. Jamie, I... That'll be the day. Oh, of course. Cohen, there should be another ship passing through in a week or two. Jamie, uh-oh. Can I go now? Cohen, you didn't drink your water. Jamie, well, no. No, well, that's right. Oh, what? That's all right. Cohen, wait a minute. Wait a moment. Jamie, what? Cohen, would you like to see over the wheel? I could arrange it for you, if you'd like. Jamie, oh, yes. I mean, there's nothing else to do. Cohen, well... I'm going, I'm, if you go along the corridor, see a man at door, Mott, Paris, of the school library. Jamie, power what? Cohen, it's the other side of the wheel complex, about eight sectors on. I'll tell, I'll tell Zoe to show you around. Jamie, Zoe? Cohen, she's, uh, well, the best way to describe it, I would be to call her our librarian. Librarian. Jamie, Zoe, you say? Cohen, that's right. Jamie, oh, you can tell me what happened. Oh, will you tell me what happened to the doctor? Cohen, yes, of course. Jamie, thank you. Jamie leaves. Cohen turns on the monitor. Cohen, parasitical, parasitical, psychological library. Dr. Cohen calling. A young, dark-haired girl answers. Zoe, on monitor. Para, psych, psychological library. What references do you require, Dr. Cohen? Cohen, no references, thank you, Zoe. I need your help in another way. Zoe, a monitor? Oh. Cohen, one of the people who is freed from the rural spaceship is coming to your section. I'd like you to show him over the wheel and observe him. Mm-hmm. Zoe, a monitor, observe him? Cohen, discreetly, of course. Zoe, a monitor? Oh, do you want those, those operations reco- observations recorded? Cohen, yes, please. Sorry, I'll monitor. Hmm, should be interesting. Any known facts, though? Cohen, yes, he's a nice lad, and his name is Jet. Jet, sorry, I'll monitor. Just a minute. Sorry. I was halfway through RNA analysis when you came on. Right, Jamie's walking along the corridor, looking for a long, complex world. Word on the door. He finds one and pushes the door open. 
parapsychological psychological library dominated by a large circular desk. Zoe is seated in the middle. Day with exception of the her- Section of Hercules Cluster, confirmation of information for seed when the stars in Messier 13 group is entering another phase. There is a will be repetition of the phenomena observed in Piraeus Cluster last week. Information the gamma radiation level is available. Zoe turns off the recorder. Zoe, sorry, you must be. Zoe, what are you laughing at? Zoe, your clothes, you're wearing female garments. Zoe, female, look. I have you know, this is a kilt. Have you not seen it before? Does only kilt a barbaric, barbaric form of garment worn by a kitty? Are you Scandinavian? Origin Danish? Do you know uh, I'm not? I'm a true red Scot, and I think it just, I just think you too. Sorry, I want a Scot, Scotland, of course, pre century history. Is it my field, you see? Do you, I maybe not? But just you watch your lip, or you put, I'll put you across my knee and lay you up. Joey, oh, this is going to be fun. I shall learn a lot from you. Come on, James Robert McCurvin. Do you know anything about interstellar flora? Joey, huh? Powder room. They meet Bill Duggan. Duggan, this is my little kingdom. Hey, how do you like a greenhouse? Jamie, do you, do you collect these? Duggan, no, they are the floating seeds. The only place they flourish is down here in the powder room. Of course, the old man kicked up the mad dust storm at, at first. Doc Corrin said it was good psychology or something. Anyway, I like the flowers. Hey, that one comes all the way from Venus. Can you imagine that? All those million miles away. Zoe, 24-254. Two, 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 Dash, oh 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 miles of pepper helium, and one six one dash six five oh dash oh oh miles at aphrodisium. Jerry, oh, I'm dying to know that. Duggan, and this is, and this is a captivator bank with the X-ray bay lasers. Jamie, the what? Jerry, oh, it controls the laser gun. Without the late guns, the, it, the gun's useless. Jerry, what do you need a gun for? Uh, for up in space anyway. Duggan's self defence. We can blot out, out any attacker up to 10,000 miles in any direction. Good, huh? Jamie is showing. Duggan, yeah. And what? They are anti field, anti-magnetic field generators. They can vend off even a medium sized meter up to 50 miles. Jamie, you know, Bill? The doctors love this. Jamie, the doctor friend of yours? He's a scientist? Jamie is in a way, I suppose, yes. Jamie, what's his speciality? Jamie, he's what? Zoe, well, is he a psychiatrist? Physicist? Biochemist? Astrologer? Biomistrogenist? Jamie, yes, he is. Duggan, he certainly sounds of interesting character. The doctor, a friend of yours. Where's he going to be up and about? Cohen's office. Cohen. If he is just suffering from concussion, not too long. Bennett, oh, it doesn't doesn't tell me much. I want facts, Cohen. I don't blame you. Bennett, he landed with a couple of strays. Panic mysteries from the crew. The routine's getting shoddy. I don't like it. Cohen, what panics? Bennett, oh, nothing, nothing. I tell you, if if it gets serious, people just edgy and space. Human beings have got to rely on routines, orderliness. Confuse them, and you get trouble. Going, yes. But I used to, to emergencies, trained in them. But these things, I don't know. Cohen, what do you call mysteries? But it, exactly, exactly. I don't want to know, Gemma. I don't want to know. Will you see? Cohen, you better hear my primary report to the boy. But it, go ahead, ahead. Yes, go ahead, Cohen. You're lying, not completely and apparently reluctantly. You're very fit mentally and physically nice, constructive personality. Blood pressure to death. You've not been in space very long. Bunnett, lies about what? Cohen, you said that he's a fever board a silver carrier. He hadn't. His gamma goblins are normal. Bunnett, oh, why should he lie 
about that? Corey and I asked him what happened to the crew. For he was his excuse for not knowing. And then again, he lied. At least I am almost sure he lied. But his friend's name, John Smith, he called him. But it, well, what they do is this, you know. But it, Cohen, yes, he was looking at that for long enough. Coincidence, possibly. Somehow I doubt it. And then what's the most previous precious thing in space? The space? The Jarvis? But it, air, yeah, water, take your pick. Cohen exactly in space training, even for one journey, travellers. He asked me for a drink of water and he left it. He might have been on Earth. That boy has no space travel training. Jarvis, he's probably stowaway, or he may be an agent. Barnett, sabotage? Cohen, plenty of people on Earth think we should suspend the, the space program. Some of them have forced their opinions already. But do you think these two could have stowed away somehow? He just posed the crew of the silver carrier, prevent, pre- pretending to be drift here, hopelessly. We'd take them in and then start breaking things up. Cohen, I don't, couldn't do that. Can't, don't go that far. But it, well, of course, it fits. Everything fits. Cohen, I only suggest it's a possibility, Jarvis. There are others. But it, we'll talk about the, those later. This could be serious. Cohen, Jarvis, wait. Zero, real operations room. Sorry, this is operations, communications room. So what does the wheel thing do up here anyway? Sorry, well, it's a varied function, but mainly it's a radio visual relay for Earth, halfway house for deep spaceships, a space research station, stellar early warning station for all types of space phenomena. And, Jeremy, I, well, I'll ask a silly question. Sorry, not there. That's the controls type chair. Ryan, hey, you're in for quite a treat, Jamie. Am I? Dublin, the old man's get, going ahead then. Ryan, too light he is. Leave her, leave, leave her off. I thought Gemma talked to him out of it. I know, only because he, she thought it might be still be somebody on board, just as well as for you. Jamie, I'm sorry, I lost for the, you in the first part. So the controller, Jervis Bennett, will destroy the rocket. Then enough. And he, we got your message. Right, only minutes into it. In two. The laser was all primed and ready to blast. Enough, as Jarvis, give him the go ahead. Ryan, yes, I'll run a new coordinate. Fix. Everything's programmed and ready. All we need now is a final signal. Jamie, you're not going to blow that rocket up the rocket then. Ryan, well, it might hit us, so we have to safe. We're on the, be on the safe state of blasting out existence. Enough. Jarvis asked me to make a visual recording of it. I better reposition. Tell me, help me to go do a quick mental calculation. Would you? You're quicker than me. Ryan, it'd be great to see that this at ledger should be quite an explosion. Enough. Right, Zoe. Learning all reading is 198.42 meters of 23 degrees latitude. <coughs> One hundred ninety point three meters, twenty four degrees latitude. Jamie leaves quietly and goes back to the work powder room. He finds X ray lasers cut prepared of bank, but doesn't notice some small twisted pieces of metal on the floor. Jamie searches the shelf for bottles and canisters. We all operations room, but it, but uh, he was definitely here. Sorry, yes, but he just vanished. But Bill, any ideas? Duggan, no, sir. He was still with us. We were showing him around. We were showing him around. Duncan, where? Duncan, well, the powerhouse. Duncan, the powerhouse? But it, the powerhouse? Duncan, yes, sir. But it, look, Bill, not a word to the others. Just follow me in a moment or two. So me, not a word. So he right, sir. But it leaves. Ryan, don't look at me. I don't know what's going on. There are enough problems. Ryan, I don't know. Duncan, it's all in the mind, dear. It's all in the mind. I'll see you. Duggan leaves. Then off. What was the controller talking to Bill Duggan about, Zoe? Zoe, nothing important. At least, I don't think so. I don't know. Does it matter? Zoe leaves. Ryan, hey, what's all this whispering about? Then off. I knew. I wish I knew, Leo. Did I ever tell you about my nose? Ryan, your nose? Then off. Yes, it's like a barometer. It never lets me down. Ryan, oh, Lenoff, I smell trouble. Ryan, can you pinpoint it? Lenoff, hmm, it's something to do with a rocket out there. 
There's something sinister about it. Rocket control room. Two larger egg-like spears are in the corner. Clock is counting up at the, the time. Sunny power cables spring to life, taking shapes from the consoles. The spears begin to grow, skins glowing and becoming translucent. You reveal a human shape, curled up inside. One of the spears bursts open to reveal a silver-free-fingered fist.